<laughs> okay, year 12. I'm mindful of time. <laughs> That's right. I'm just mindful of time. So, what I'm going to do is uh, try my best to unpack this for you quite literally. Okay, now, the important thing, we're, we're going to have, and I don't apologize for it because it's actually quite elegant once you get there, but we are going to have some quantity of algebra soup on the board, but I promise I'll do everything I can to make it clear. The important thing is the logic you use to get to that algebra soup and then how you wade your way through it, how you navigate your way through it. So here is the most important question and I actually heard it as some people were discussing with each other, how did you do this? The first critical decision you must make and I asked it with our previous example is, here's the k plus one case, you got a left hand side, you got a right hand side. Which one makes it easier to use the inductive hypothesis? Now. This is one of the reasons why this is, I, I wondered at first, like why did they put this into extension too? Sigma notation, all that kind of thing. It used to be just in the regular old advanced course, what we used to call two units. I was like, what's the big deal? And then I did this example for myself and realized, okay, left hand side, right hand side. Usually we would think the right hand side is the easiest thing to pull out the inductive hypothesis from. Just like we saw in the previous example, Usually this means, oh, you've got all the ones from the assumption and then one extra one, right? It's, that's literally what we did last time. Can anyone tell me why in this particular question you run into a big fat problem? Any takers? <laughs> it just seems weird to do. Famous statement in many mathematical papers. Uh, and gets right, and your instincts sometimes, even when you can't quite articulate them, often are worth trusting. But let's see if we can do more than just trust the Engels instincts, right? He's exactly right that the binomial coefficient is the problem. Have a look at this guy with me, okay? If we were to say, consider right-hand side, and maybe that's exactly how your working has begun, right? You then write this, you write this, and then the first thing you begin to do is see how you can expand it to get this part here but you're in trouble immediately because there's no twisting and turning, or let me say that again, you'd have to do a lot of twisting and turning to turn this into this. Uh, just go back to that um, factorial notation that I said you wouldn't have to use to try and see the difference between these, okay? Uh, the first one is k factorial on r factorial k minus r factorial. There's the particular binomial coefficient in the f assumption, is that okay? Let's have a look at it for the other one. Hmm, uh, k plus one factorial on r factorial uh, k plus one minus r factorial. Did I do it right? I put k plus ones everywhere I put k's. Now you can do some stuff to this, like for example, this same unwrapping of sigma notation you can do with factorials. This, this top, this numerator here is k plus one k factorial, do you agree? And then on the denominator, you can do a similar thing here. This is one more than this. So it's like this times an extra term. All right, I think you're going to get this. K plus 1 minus R, K minus R factorial. Take a breath, okay? But even as you look at that, I hope your brain is like, please don't make me, <laughs> please don't make me do that for any more than one term. It's a disaster, okay? We don't want to do that. There's a better way. Instead of doing the right-hand side, let's have a look at the left, okay? Mercifully, this is much easier, right? Here's the left-hand side. And actually, now that you look at it, it hardly takes anything to reshape this so you can see the inductive hypothesis. What's the difference between this and what you see in the assumption? Yeah, it's just one multiple of x plus a difference between this and this. Do you agree? That's what the plus one in the index means. So as a result, I'm going to write this slightly weirdly. I'm going to use some colors here to help me. I said I was going to try and make this algebra soup clear. I'm going to write the x in blue and I'm going to write the a, whoops, <laughs> what am I doing? Even as he says he's going to write it in a different color, he writes it in the same color. I'm going to write it red, okay? Now, there we go. Okay, what comes next is the left-hand side of the assumption, which is really good for me because it means I can just use the assumption. And that's exactly what I'm going to do on the next line. Okay, so I've got my x and my a here. Man, how does that black pen, red pen guy do it? Okay, so there's my first binomial. 
Okay. Now I'm going to substitute here on the right hand side uh, this by assumption. Okay. So let's go ahead and do it. Now I'm going to save myself a step. I'm going to have to expand this anyway. Sorry. Here comes a big bracket. What is this thing? Well, I'm going to start with first term uh, r equals zero, right? So what's my first binomial coefficient going to be? I'll give you a clue. It starts with a k. Kc zero, right? Yep. Next one long is going to be x to the power of k minus zero. So I'll just write k, and then a to the power of zero, which is just one. So I'll just leave that. Okay. Next term along, kc one, and then what happens? X to k. One less k. Uh, sorry, one less x, and one more a. Is that okay? So one less of these, and one more of those. I need to establish a pattern, so I'm going to get to the third one. One more, or oh, sorry, one less x and one more a. And then, dot, 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 what will my final term be? Mm, have a look closely, right? I'm going all the way up to k, aren't I? So it's going to be k, c, k. All of the x's by this point, see how they start? I started with a lot and then they're climbing down, 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 down. By this last term, I have no, no more of them. So I'm not even going to write x. I'm just going to write a and then I've got all, all of the a's there. Okay. Now, why did I highlight these two colors up here? Right? You're not going to like this, but I'm going to expand. Why am I going to do this? Okay. Uh, Remember, I'm trying to turn n's, or in this case, k's. Where have I got to get to? I've got to get to these guys, right? Do you see where I'm trying to get to? I've got all these wrong coefficients in there, and I've got to find these guys turning into this guy. Does that make sense? There's going to be pairs of them that are going to turn into the binomial coefficients on the next line. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this, and I'm not going to do it uh, on one line. You'll see why in a second. What's the first term going to be? Kc0, and then what? I'm distributing this x to everything in there. What am I going to get? x to the power of k plus 1. Because I started with k of them, and now I've got one more. Uh, let's do the next one. Uh, k, c, 1. How many x's have I got this time? k of them. It's this times x, so k. And then there's an a hanging out there. I'll do one more just to get the pattern. k, c, 2. 1 less x, 1 more a. And then I say, dot, 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 where do I end up? K, C, K, and then I just multiply it by an X. There we go. Is that okay? Wasn't so hard, all right. Now I need to do A multiplied by everything, but I'm going to do it slightly off. I'm doing it on the next line, and I'm going to push it over one term so that there's some cancelling that happens. Well, not quite cancelling, collecting. If I multiply a by this first term in here, I'm going to write it here, I get kc0, should be a plus sign there, and then how many x's are there? K. x to the power of k, like nothing's changed to x, I've just multiplied by a. So it's x to the k, a. and then there's an a, because that's what I was doing, right? Multiplying everything by a, even before I go any further. Do you see, this is, this is happy times for me, like you see I've got like terms that are going to collect in a second. Let's do the next one. Uh, K, C, uh, 1. What am I going to have? X to the K minus 1. I haven't changed it at all. And then it's, uh, it's actually, sorry, it's this one here, isn't it? Wait, did I get that right? Oh, no, I was right. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong row. It's this one here. It is A squared. Going crazy. Okay, is that right? You can see it still is going to connect here. Plus dot, dot, dot. Now, I need the second last term. There's actually a term before this one that would be uh, x a to the k minus 1. And when I multiply that by a, what's going to happen? You're going to get k, k, minus k minus 1. It's going to line up with this. And then I have the very, very last term, which like the very first term doesn't match or doesn't pair with anything. So it's going to be k, c, k. A to the k plus 1. And you can see this kind of nice symmetry here. You've got this one, the k plus 1. Ooh, a k plus 1. It's almost like I wanted a k plus 1. You've also got this one with a k plus 1. So things are starting to look like what I wanted. OK? 
Kate? All right, so we kind of just ran out of time at the end of the lesson there. So what I want to do is pick up where we left off, left off uh, try and tie this up in a nice neat bow. And then also, uh, because we have now the luxury of time, uh, prove this result upon which this induction actually relies, which I kind of gave you, I reminded uh, at the beginning of the lesson about Pascal's identity, uh, but I just kind of referred to it and said, yeah, it works, uh, let's use it, but we didn't actually go through a proof in the context of this particular question. So let's see if we can close this all off and then deal with Pascal's identity. The last thing that we did was we took this uh, somewhat messy object, this x plus a out the front from the original binomial expansion, and then the actual expansion of what we got from the sig notation, which uh, was part of our inductive hypothesis, our assumption. So we kind of got to write down what the expansion was, at least part of it, and you can see what I've done here is that color coding between blue and red. Uh, this line here is what happens when I multiply everything inside these square brackets by x, and then what I've got down in here in red is what happens when I multiply everything in the square brackets by A. Now the thing I want to remind you of, and I'm going to use some highlighting here that will hopefully be instructive and helpful, is that there's going to be collection of like terms. There's going to be several terms in the blue series uh, that match up with terms in the red series. So which ones are they? Now, if I just have a look in the first instance, let's use um, let's use orange. Yeah, um, you can see there's this x to the k times a term here, and it's binomial coefficient k c one, and then it matches in the red series with this x to the k a term, which has a different binomial coefficient, kc0. So that's orange. Uh, I'm just going to keep on going along identifying as many as I possibly can. Uh, here is the x to the k minus 1 a squared term uh, in the red and then the corresponding term in the blue and then in terms of what I've actually written here, the final terms that I've got pairing up, matching up, uh, let's go with, uh, I think I can use pink over here, yep. Um, here is our x a to the k term in the red series, and the x a to the k term is the last term in the blue series. Now it's also worth highlighting, um, everything in between is going to match up, even though um, I haven't got the term that corresponds to this in the series above, it will match up, and the same with this blue term over here. There are two terms that will not match up, and those are the very um, first and last terms. The first term in the blue series, uh, that's this one here, there is no corresponding x to the k plus 1 term. Neither is there, if you look at the end, neither is there a corresponding a to the k plus 1 term. So they're going to be left on the edges and separate. So let's start to uh, pair these things up. In the first instance, I'm just going to write uh, x to the k plus 1 because of course k c0, um, any integer c0 is going to give you just 1. So I'm not writing it at the front there, that'll become important later on. Um, then I go to, let's see if we can keep this color coding consistent. I'm going to write this orange because it's highlighted in orange up here. The next thing that turns up is the x to the k a term. But what is the coefficient out the front of it? Well there's the two binomial coefficients that go together. So let's just write that carefully. You've got the uh, kc1 uh, term and the kc0 term. That's how many x to the k a's there are. Let's go to green to do the next one. Um, it's going to be, let's see here, uh, kc2 plus kc1. That's how many of the next term I have, k minus 1 a squared. And then we get this uh, dot 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 happening. Uh, the intervening terms in the other dot dot dots, they're also going to match up up here. And then I pick up with this pink term. Let's see, get the right color here. There we are. Um, this is the x to the a k term. So uh, in brackets, what have I got? Actually, you know what? I'm just going to go on to the next line. Um, I'm going to have k c k and then k c k minus 1. That's how many x to the a k's that I have. And then the very last term, again, this kck um, by definition, and also you can use the factorial notation to see that that's just going to be 1 as well, just like the opposite term. Um, you can also think about the rows of Pascal's triangle, the first number on any row and the last number on any row are going to be 1. So I'm not going to write that one since it's multiplying and doesn't change anything. It just leaves me with a to the k plus 1.
All right, now this is fabulous because I can now use this Pascal's identity business here, right? You can see, um, looking at one row of Pascal's triangle, if you take two adjacent numbers, um, that N stands for the row, and then this R and this R minus one stand for two numbers on that row that are beside each other, then what they're equal to when you add them is the next row down and the corresponding number. So when I take this to uh, these terms down here, I can take these dual binomial coefficients in the kth row and combine them, add them up into a single binomial coefficient on the k plus oneth row. Now while I'm at that, I'm also going to include the fact that um, these first and last terms, this one and this one, even though I simplified out the khc0 as one and the kck as one, I'm trying to get things, like remember this is all, um, the goal is here, I'm trying to get things in terms of uh, the k plus one case. So I'm gonna have k plus one CR out the front. I can write this in terms of a binomial coefficient with k plus one in it. It's just going to be, Oopsie daisy, doing that a lot today. The k plus one uh, row, and it's the zeroth coefficient, um, just like it was the zeroth coefficient for this row. So that's how many x to the k plus ones I've got. All right, let's go back to orange. So uh, what am I gonna have here? Well, I'm going to add, I'm going on to the next row, k plus one, and then it's gonna be the first term, which is a relief because you can see here's the zeroth term, here's the first one, it's just the next one along. So that's gonna be my x to the k a term. Uh, what am I in green now? I've got the k plus one th row, and I'm up to the second term, x to the k minus one. So you can see at this point, I have well and truly established my pattern, but let's finish it off. Uh, what do I get here? I've got the pink term, so that's going to be, let's have a look. So k plus one th row again, it's going to be the kth term, so that's x a to the k, and then finally, I'm also gonna add in that this uh, kck, I can replace with k plus one, ck plus one. So now you can see everything is in terms of this correct binomial coefficient. Okay, now when you have a look at this line, it's, uh, it's brilliant because when you have a look at each one of the terms, they are at last in the same format. You've got the binomial coefficient on the k plus one row. You've got next term, which starts at k plus one, and it goes down to k, then k minus one, and when you arrive at the end, you have no more x's left. Then you've got these a terms, which start at, there are no a terms here, zero terms. There's one of them, there's two. You go all the way up to k plus one. So what is this? I can be extremely lazy, and I can say this is exactly what I was looking for here on the right hand side uh, of my k plus one case. So I can say that equals, ta-da, that in sigma notation, which is what I was aiming to prove. So, uh, you do have to be fairly careful with your segmentation and also with your binomial coefficients, but I think it's just brilliant that we can prove this very, very important combinatorial result using proof by mathematical induction.